Hey everyone, Gil Gross here, post-match Dominic Team versus Nick Kyrgios, 2021 Australian Open Round 3. If you're not here for spoilers, click off the video in 3, 2, 1. Did I say 2020 in the beginning? I meant 2021. Yes, um, Nick Kyrgios goes up two sets to love. Dominic Team storms back for a five-set victory. So, naturally... I'm going to tell you about how Kyrgios got off to a good start and um, was able to build his advantage. And then I will talk about what changed in this match and allowed Dominic Team to come back in this match. Ultimately, 6-3, 6-4, 6-4 were the last three sets. No tie breaks in this match, which is uh, surprising for a five-setter between these two, no? Uh, but it all started first game of the match and, and team got, gets off to kind of a slow start off the ground, which he does sometimes. He's not always the fastest starter. He's a feel player. He's a rhythm player. I think that, that he needs to kind of, um, feel his ground game a little bit before he really peaks and gets going, generally speaking. So it, it was a tough game for him right off the bat. He made some errors that we really didn't see from him for the rest of the match, but, I would say the avoidable thing for Dominic Team was something that I really harped on when I in my breakdown of Kyrgios versus Umber in round two, which is that my rule for serving against Nick Kyrgios is if you're going to get broken by Nick, at least make him hit two first serve returns on the forehand side. And from my observation, generally, he won't make two good ones in one game. <laughs> kind of what, what I observed. Nick Kyrgios uh, long term and team did not make him hit a single forehand first serve return in this game every first serve that that Nick won at least um, every point that Kyrgios won was on a backhand return on the first serve or a second serve and that doesn't count forehand backhand doesn't matter uh, so you'll see how team remedies that in fact if I I'm going to cheat a little bit and skip ahead because that was a problem here for the early parts of the match. And ultimately, I think team figured it out. And serving for the fourth set at five games to four, one of the most important parts of the entire match, team was down break point at 30-40. Went to the forehand, got a free point. Then it was deuce, went to the forehand, got a free point. Two in a row. And he uh, closed out the game, closed out the fourth set. And really got a, a diminished Nick Kyrgios in the fifth set. And we'll get to that in a moment. But another dynamic that played out throughout the first two sets was Kyrgios' serve dominance. And that's what made, that's what, what always was going to make this matchup so dangerous for Nick Kyrgios. The courts are slick. They are quick. And Kyrgios is an elite server. And that is the one part of Dominic Team's game that is still vulnerable. The return on a quick surface against an elite server. That's it. Boom. That's the weakness right there. So because this, this match checked all of those boxes, it's a player who can keep the, the, the points short and can get some free points off of Team's return and can play some first strike tennis, taking advantage of Team's... Uh, deep return position that he has to employ and kind of the defensive mindset that team has on his return against the elite servers. It's an extremely defensive mindset. Um, you know, Kyrgios is someone who can take advantage of that. We saw that in the first two sets. You had an average first serve speed from Kyrgios in the first set of 124 miles per hour. And then you had in the second set an average ser first serve speed of 121 miles per hour. Let me fact check that going off memory. Yes, I'm correct on both of those. Um, and you had a lot of short rallies, right? In the second set, which was Kyrgios's best set, you had 77% of Kyrgios's service points be played in zero through four shots. 77%. That means that the serve is having a huge effect on how the points are being played. That means that team is not getting in rallies, which means he's not hitting, he's not getting back to neutral is generally what that means. It could mean in some cases that Kyrgios makes an early error, but for the most part, the shorter points are on average, 
the larger an effect the serve is having on the match. So you can see in the um, you can see in the the second set how that plays out, and then in the in the fourth set in the fifth set, again if I may skip ahead. Not quite as often. And and the, the little... Remember, you know, this is about one or two points. This is a close match. One break each set. So these small things make a very big difference. Well, in the fourth set, it was 70% of Kyrgios' service points being played zero through four shots. In the fifth set, it was 68% of Kyrgios' service points being played zero through four shots. So that number diminishes, 77%. Actually, the third set was um, even worse. But I, you know, um, I don't have that number exact. But but you could see the, la the, fa the final three sets, team was way better when it comes to getting in more rallies because his return was better. And with that, simultaneously, you will see a drop in first serve speed from Nick Kyrgios. I'll get to that in a little bit more depth in a moment. But first, um, I'll just say that the one break in the second set was a game in which, going off my rule, team made Kyrgios hit one good forehand first serve return. So that game went to deuce. Of all of the points, and it was more than four points, must have been must have been either six, six or eight points that, that Kyrgios won in the game that he broke team in the second set, one of those points was off of a first serve forehand return. Doesn't reach my threshold. Again, I think he he got better. I don't know why this is not the game plan right away. And, you know, I want to say, let, if you go back and you watch the 2020 Aussie Open match between Nadal and Kyrgios... Oh, Rafa knew. Forehand, 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 forehand. That's all. It's the only spot Nadal was serving the whole time. So watch that. That's how to do it. That's how to play Kyrgios. Team figured it out, but it took him a little while. So we see the serve speed going down for Kyrgios. We see team with that, you know, kind of taking advantage of that, connecting on more returns, getting into more rallies. The final three sets of this match... Dominic Team was absolutely incredible. He was unbelievable. I could not believe how solid Team was throughout. And the the reason I was so impressed was because here you're playing a guy in Nick Kyrgios gives you no rhythm. He's as unpredictable as it gets when it comes to opponents. You don't know what kind of shot. You don't know if a, if a drop shot's coming. It doesn't matter if he's behind the baseline. You don't know if he's serve volleying. You don't know if he's hitting a first serve to the second. You don't know if he's hitting a drop serve like he did on set point to win the second set. You have no clue what's coming. That's one challenge. Because as much as you want to focus on him, you got to focus on yourself. Add in the fact that you have this wild, wild crowd. Wild crowd. And then you have an emotionally volatile Kyrgios on the other side of the net, who's also causing more distractions. Plus, you're not getting into a lot of rallies. So it's it's hard to really get your build up your confidence off the ground. With all of those factors combined, team was flawless. Whenever team dug his teeth into the rally, he was opportune. He did not surrender any chances. And let's face it, Kyrgios, he's an elite server. There's not going to be a lot of margin. There's not. It's going to be tight margins here. And despite that, it seemed that any opening team got, anytime he got his return in play, anytime he got a look at a passing shot, or he had a chance in this match in the final three sets, he took them. I mean, look at the unforced errors count. And, and I do not like unforced errors as a stat. I don't. But I think it's telling here. I think it's telling. Team made one unforced error in the third set. To Kyrgios is 10. Let's go to set four. Team made five unforced errors in the fourth set. To Kyrgios is 16. And in the fifth set. Team made two unforced errors. 
to Kyrgios' seven. These numbers, they're tiny. They're tiny. And it just seemed watching the match, it was like, this this dude isn't missing whenever he gets the chance. And again, like, I just think giving, given the circumstances, that's that was unbelievable. And Kyrgios acknowledged it after the match. He is so disciplined. He is so poised. That's That was the most impressive thing about Dominic Team. With that being said, he had the fitness advantage. He had the fitness advantage, and that was a huge factor. A couple things here. A couple things. One, we talked about what Kyrgios did um, against Hugo Umber in the big spots. The moments that really mattered, right? Nick is not fit enough to do this for an entire match. But against Hugo Umber, when it really mattered, he could dig his heels in. He could drop back a little bit, surrender some court position, and do some road work. Do some running. Defend. Lengthen rallies. He could do that a little bit. And he could steal some points that way. But you didn't see any of that against Dominic Team, Albeit Team is a tougher player to do that against. Just because he's better. Plain and simple, he's better than, than Hugo Umber. Uh, but I don't think Kiros had the energy. I don't think he had the legs to do that. So, first of all, that was out of the equation. And it made Kyrgios a much more handleable baseline threat. He was not as good from the baseline as he could have been if he was 100% threat, uh, 100% fresh. But the the next thing is is first serve speed, first serve average speed. Cuz in set in set number 1 it was 123, in set number 2 it was 121, and then it it it, it hovered around 121 in set 3 and 4. And then in set 5, you can see it take a big dip. He was out of gas. Kyrgios's first serve average in set 5 was 117 mile per hour. Uh, 117 miles per hour, excuse me. And I think in the game that team uh, broke serve, I think it was even slower. And when I checked, when I checked this stat, as soon as team broke, it was at 113, which means Nick actually pumped some serves in there in his final two service games that actually raised his average. But when he got broken, he was hitting some off-speed slice serves that just looked tired. And that just reminded me of the U.S. Open final, where team beat Zverev. Again, at the beginning of the video, I talked about the spot the team is vulnerable in. Against an elite server, team can sometimes struggle to get enough returns um, with enough interest back to get back to neutral. With consistency, right? Well, now this is two matches I've seen, and I'm sure it's happened more than that, but I've seen two matches now that come to mind where team has a fitness advantage and he survives long enough to drain the big server. And once he drains the big server, empty the gas tank a little bit. Now... He can connect on returns. Now he can get that advantage. So the fact that he had more gas than Kyrgios, that he outlasted him, that was big. And that's why the, the fifth set, it really felt like Nick was hanging on the whole time. A lot of serve volley points on second serves. And then the last thing is, you know, I, and this is probably also had to do with physical fatigue. You saw Nick's focus drop off. In the second set, he goes for a tweener volley. And... That was on game point at four all. Probably should have put away that volley, and he ended up getting broken. Team took zero points for granted. Zero. Curios, he took a lot of points for granted. And tennis, it's about a couple points here or there. And that's why team has the mentality of a champion, and Nick Curios does not. Fitness. Mental, all those things, solidly in Dominic Team's corner. What Nick Kyrgios had to do to win this match was win it in straights with his pure tennis skills. He almost did it. He had break chances in the third set. Dominic Team escapes. And let me tell you, it's looking like some smoother sailing from here, matchup wise, and especially with Djokovic, if he if he makes it as far as the semifinal, um, I think that. The trickiest part of at least the first week and probably early on in the second week is now behind Dominic Team. 
Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.